What's up guys, I'm Teresa and I am here with somebody special today. Go ahead and Hello. And you are? I'm Madison Ryan. It's nice to meet everyone who is listening. Alright, um, how old are you? I am 18 years old. <laughs> who else is in the rest of your band? You know, I don't I don't have a band. It changes every time. So I can't really answer that question. <laughs> Alright. Do you play any instruments? I do. I play guitar and piano. I used to play cello, but that was like way back when. Um, but I'm not very good at guitar and piano. I really just use it for writing purposes. How did you get into music? Oh man, um, I grew up in a house where okay, my, my dad was always in bands for like his entire life. Um, before music, I was actually, I was a competitive figure skater for 10 years of my life. So that's like what I pretty much did. And then when I was 13, um, I always like loved music. I had a passion for music and love for it. And I loved listening to it. And I was like, oh, like that'd be so cool if I could do music. Um, but I just never really like got super hardcore into it and then I, when I was like 13 I went to an art school and um, I, I just decided I was gonna sing them one day out of nowhere I was like I'm just gonna record myself on my phone and I like showed it to my parents and they were like that's not you like you what'd you do to your voice like you're not good at singing like wh why does this sound good so I was like, no, like, I promise, I, I literally just decided to do this. And, and they were like, wow, you don't suck at that. Maybe, maybe you should do music. And then I was like, I just kind of fell in love with it more than I already was before. And I realized that music is the only thing that I want to do with my life. And, you know, I started taking voice lessons and I just started writing a lot. Um, and then the rest is kind of history. Were you competitive at figure skate? That's so cool. Yeah, that was 10 years of my life. I, I don't know why, but I I was a figure skater, and it was it was intense. That sounds <laughs> cool. That sounds like, it seems like one of the most competitive sports out of, like, everything, figure oh, skating. Oh, it definitely is. I've definitely yeah. learned a lot of things from figure skating. And so, uh, actually, a, a lot of the stuff that I, um, that, that's one of the things I like. I hated competing. I'm not good with like competing. I don't like when there's something on the line. And I think that's why I like music so much more. It's just because when I perform, like I don't even really get nervous because it's, it's just fun. And it's, um, I'm not like competing with anyone. Like <laughs> it's just, you know. And you've been doing music I, since you're 13? Sorry, you're lagging on my end a little bit. <laughs> What's that? I said you were lagging on my end a bit, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, sorry. Not your fault. My internet's been a bit goofy today. Great. Yeah, I've been, uh, like, seriously doing music since I was 13. That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> Ignore that. <laughs> I love Harry Potter. Same. <laughs> what genre would you consider your music? It's definitely pop. I think that's the primary genre that I would call my music, but it it has tinges of like punk in there and tinges of uh, like rock. So um, it really just depends on the song. But I would like to go more for the like pop route. That's kind of what I am going for and trying to achieve. Um. Well, you're definitely you're definitely getting. But I can't talk to. Sorry. Yeah, that definitely comes across as like pop rock, though. With so, yeah, some yeah, songs worse than others, but <laughs> definitely. What musicians are you inspired by? Wow, that is a very hard question. Um, <laughs> I I really I don't have one set answer for that. Um, I've been influenced by so many different musical artists and and bands and. 
and writers throughout my entire life. Um, so I really, I mean, just to name a few, I guess like when I was when I was like little, I, I used to listen to Weezer and the Beatles a lot. Those were like two of my favorite bands. Um, and then like present day, I, I I just I'm influenced by like absolutely everything like that has to do with music. Um, but like some of my favorite songwriters would definitely be like Jack Antonoff from Bleachers. Um, so. I'm very, I'm just influenced by pretty much everything. <laughs> Weezer is <laughs> awesome. It's hard to find Weezer fans sometimes. Yeah, I know. For some reason, when I was like four years old, that was like my favorite band. Yeah, yeah Say It Ain't So is my favorite by them personally. <laughs> yeah. Such a good song. It is. It's one of my favorites. I got, I got to see them live uh, like two summers ago. It was awesome. That I'm was still a huge awesome. fan of them. The I can only imagine. Was, like, I think they're going on tour again. I don't remember who with, but I saw something about that recently. Probably they just. They, I'm pretty sure they like just released a new album not too long ago. Yeah, it was a little bit ago. Are you releasing any new music or music videos soon? Yes. Uh, so my EP primary comes out on April 13th next Friday. Um, so that's that's really a really huge thing for me right now and um you can pre-order it right now and um i'm trying to chart on billboard so every purchase or pre-order between now and april 20th will count towards my first week sales um so i'm really trying to get that all good to go and so that that's that's the real big release thing but i do have a video hopefully coming out next thursday oh that's gonna be cool for um, the second single off of the EP, which was In Too Deep. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to pick that up when I go to your show next week? Yeah, that'd be next week. Yeah, right? yeah, next Friday. It's on the day of the release, so. Double CD release show, that one. Oh, yeah, cool. I actually, I ended up, um, my EP was actually supposed to come out on April 27th, but I ended up moving it back a few weeks so I could be on that show, and, and it could be a really fun night, so. It definitely will be. It's going to be crazy. I'm so excited. And I, I love the guys in Minshara, and I always love when I get to play a show with them. So it was, it was really cool that I got to work out that way, um, since we all like kind of work with the same people and we're so close. And um, so it's just really cool that we can release our CD on the same day and have a cool little show to go with it. Is there a particular message you want people to get after listening to your music? I, I wouldn't say um, there's one single message. that I, I think the one thing that I hope people listen to this EP and take away from it is just like, I, I like to think that a lot of the songs in the EP have uh, a theme of like finding yourself and... Um, kind of coming in your own and realizing who you are and um so and and like some of the songs more so than others there, there's some on there that are just straight up about like relationship problems <laughs> but um other than that like like paranoid for example like that one was really about my struggles with anxiety and depression and just being stuck in that and and that i, I hope people that can i hope to I just hope that people can relate to like the songs that that's kind of all I strive for. Like, I don't hope that there's any message that I want. There's no message that I want people to like necessarily feel. I want people to come back to me and be like, this is the message I got from that. And this, I relate to this because of this. And so if that answers your question at all. <laughs> yeah, it, it answers it, definitely. Every song, chances are, will have, like, a different meaning to er everyone, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, and I, I just, I absolutely love that. Yeah. That's pro that's the really cool thing about music. Everyone will take it in a different way. Yeah, and that's something that I absolutely love about, like, songwriting, like, you know, so. What's your favorite song to perform? 
sorry. One more time. Uh, what's your favorite song to perform? Um, probably, probably, um, as far as original songs, definitely probably In Too Deep. Um, but as far as, like, covers, I really like singing Are You Gonna Be My Girl by Jet. It's a good one. That one's super fun. What's the hardest one to do live? Oh, man, definitely, prob- uh, I would say Best of Me, which I don't, I don't think many people know that one yet, because it's off the EP, and obviously the EP's not out yet. But I, I usually don't even play it live, because it's just that hard to sing sometimes. Um, but I will be playing it next week. <laughs> but it's, it's definitely the one I struggle with most. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I don't know if I've heard that one. I don't know if you ever played it when I've gone. Yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't played it that that much. What's your writing process like? Wow, that's another hard question. Um, usually when I when people ask this, I don't have a set answer just because uh, with writing it's it's just different every single time. Like. Sometimes I'll start with a title. Sometimes I'll start with a poem. Um, sometimes I'll just write something in five minutes and that's the song. Sometimes it'll take months. Um, sometimes it starts with a, a guitar track. Sometimes it starts with like a put together music track. And then we write lyrics and melodies to it. Or, you know, it's just... It's just absolutely different every time sometimes i'm writing with other people and sometimes i'm just writing on my own so it's so different every time but that's something that i just love about songwriting because it it just keeps it you know you, you never get tired of it yeah i i don't remember uh like sometimes i do and it's like it can either be a pain or it goes really easily yeah you know i just i just told someone the other week i was like Sometimes songwriting is what I go to when I'm super stressed out and like it's the one thing that helps me get away and then other times I'm like I'm never writing a song ever again. This is horrible. <laughs> like this makes me feel like crap. I don't want to do this. Those are the only two mutatory there is no in between. <laughs> yeah, no, it's one way or the other. <laughs> Where do you get your inspiration? Kinda of touched uh, on that bit, but yeah, literally everything. Like, sometimes I'll be driving down the road and, like, it's just, <laughs> I'll see, like, something and I'll be like, okay, that makes me think of something. And I really don't know how to answer that. It's all other good. Other than, than everything, like, everything around me people, things, situations. Are your songs written based off of personal experience? Um, most of them are, but there are a few. Um, actually, one in particular was not written. I didn't write it from my own perspective. I wrote it about as if it was my friend. My friend was going through something with a guy, and I didn't really have much to write about in my own personal life. So I was like, that, like this is how I would feel if I was going through that. I'm going to write about it, even though I'm not, like, dealing with it firsthand. So, um, well, that's, that's interesting, too, when you can kind of do that. What's been your biggest challenge as a musician? My biggest challenge is definitely myself. I'm a very, very, very insecure person. Um, Um, what's your favorite venue to play and why? Did you catch that? <laughs> Alright guys, we lost her. Hang on a second. Alright guys, we got oh, her no. back. <laughs> oh no! Alright, I caught the... the I caught part of your answer for the biggest challenge. I'm not sure if you were finished. <laughs> no, well, yeah, basically just 
but the biggest challenge is myself because I'm just super insecure and I just like honestly I kind of hate everything I do all the time and and I struggle with like patience I'm not a very patient person whereas like I want to do music now I want to live my dreams now but I know sometimes it's not as easy as it you know it, well it's not as easy as it as you want it to be um so sometimes I just need to like get out of my own way and be like no like you're fine just do what you do and be happy about it what's your favorite venue to play and why this is a tricky question because i haven't played that many venues <laughs> but out of the ones that i have played um I have two. I really obviously love playing HMAC. I play there a lot. And since they opened up the big room upstairs, because um, they used to only have the, the small room um, located downstairs, so I used to just play that room a lot. But I, I love that big stage upstairs. And um, that room is just so pretty and, and awesome. Um, but other than that, I really like the Rusty Rudder in Dewey Beach. Um, I've been grateful enough to play Dewey Beach Pop Fest and Dewey Beach Music Conference um, more than one year. So I really like that venue because that has like so many different stages and it's at the beach and I love the beach. So <laughs> I'm actually playing there next weekend. I'm really excited about it. I'll definitely, I, I can't catch it next week, but I'd love to go one of these years. I keep hearing good things about it from everyone yeah, that's brought it up. Well, Pop Dewey Beach Pop Fest um, October is next Saturday. Well, you know, I'm not gonna be able to go. I got other stuff. I got other people. I'm actually seeing them that day, unfortunately. Oh, got you. Dudes in all cool. right it, here. It was like a really late. Uh, I wasn't sure if I was gonna play it or not. Um, I, I wasn't like hearing anything back, but it looks like it's happening now. So I'm just really excited to go to the beach. Honestly. I can imagine. I mean, regardless of time of the year. Do you have any pre-show rituals? Um, yeah, not, not really. I mean, I usually, like I said, I'm not really in like a set band, so I really kind of just hang out with myself a little, like before the show. I try to like, especially recently, I've just kind of tried to take, um, five to 15 minutes of just like me time i usually just put my headphones in um i always like to warm up and i just kind of you know get myself ready and prepared and i just kind of like to separate from all the hustle and bustle for a minute just to like kind of relax are there any particular artists you like to play shows with <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. Do you mean, like, anyone or, like, people I've played with already? Um, people you've played with already. As far as people I've played with already, obviously, I love playing with Minshara. Those guys are my homies, and they're, they're just incredible. Um, I'm trying to think of who else I've, like, played with. Um, you played with a lot of people. I yeah, and usually usually it's at like conferences or festivals. So I sometimes they all just kind of like blend together, and I can't remember. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, that that's a question that I have to like think about. <laughs> Pretty much Minshara. <laughs> yeah, really, it's really just Minshara because I just play with them so often. The energy seems up with like both of you guys when you play a show together. Like yeah, yeah. Plus, then you guys are always like hanging out downstairs, and um, yeah, then people are like, yeah. oh, on. We're just all friends and stuff, so it's always fun to play when you can play a show with your friends. I remember when that little girl went up to you and Liam when you guys were at the merch table and she was so starstruck. It was the cutest thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She was like, oh, my God, at least I have my shirt. And it's just like, she's so adorable. <laughs> Do 
Do you have any funny concert stories? Um, I definitely do, but I don't know any off the top of my head. <laughs> um, okay, uh, the only thing I can really think of right now, um, last year, I forget how it happened, but somehow when I was singing the one song, um, okay, well, I have two stories, I lied, and they both happened on the same night. It was at Dewey Beach Pop Fest last year. I was on my last song, and the microphone, like, fell off the stand or something. Like, the cord was not connected to the, like, something crazy happened with the microphone. So then I had to just, like, jump over to uh, the other microphone. And, I mean, that's not really that funny, but, like, it was it was kind of funny. But then, that same night... Um, so at Dewey Beach, they have, like, these signs that they put on your stage with, like, your name on them. And that night, um, these people were fighting over my sign. <laughs> like, the, the guys just stole it from the stage. <laughs> and people were, like, fighting over it. Can they do that? They were, like, <laughs> holding it up. And then, like, those, like, uh, there, there was other people there that night that, like, literally were jumping on stage, like, with me. <laughs> But it was just a party. Like, it was a crazy night. But it, it was really fun, and it was hilarious. I couldn't stop laughing. That sounds cool. I saw pictures from that last year. The crowd looked huge. Like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, it was a really weird show because there was nobody there when I started my set. And then halfway through, there was, like, a lot of people, and they were all crazy and, like, there to just have the best time of their life. And... That night, so many weird things just happened that night. It was, like, the funniest, funniest thing ever. I mean, hey, you're on the beach. You're seeing Madison. Like, who wouldn't just be all happy, you know? Uh Uh-huh. What's your favorite memory from one of your shows? Um, I, I guess there was just one time when I was playing... I think it was, like, Arts Fest in Harrisburg, which is where I'm from. And a lot of my friends were there to see me. And and then there was people that I didn't even know. And um, I was playing Can't Help It, which used to be, like, the song that everybody, like, at, like at least around local Harrisburg people knew that, like, that was, like, my song kind of thing. Um and I don't know, I just, everyone was, like, singing it. And that's something that I've always, like, I was, like, someday I just want to go to a show and, like, have people sing my lyrics back to me. So that was cool. And, yeah. I, I, like, all my friends were there, so it was, like, super cool. It's and a catchy I, song. Well, yeah. It used to be on SoundCloud, and it's not on there anymore. Yeah, I took it down. I thought about, like, redoing it and just, like, releasing it. Because that, that demo that was on SoundCloud is, like, four years old. It's good, though. Whenever you play it live, that's the one song everybody knows. It's, like, they could know yeah. no other song. But they could know Can't Help It. It's the Cotton Candy song. <laughs> Who would you like to tour with in the future? Oh, I like that question. Um, well... If I'm thinking, like, not realistically, uh, I really, like, my dream people to go on tour with, uh, I really like, um, I really love Paramore. I really like Taylor Swift, although I don't know how well that would work with my music. It could work out, Um, somehow. I really like Panic at the Disco. Um... I just went to see Lord the other day, and I've been so into Lord lately, so like that would be cool. But I also don't know how well that would work with my music either. Um, but in a realistic sense, like right now, just anyone who would take me on tour, like I'd go. Here's a good lineup for a tour or a show: you, Minchara, and Panic at the Disco. 
Yeah. Didn't I they say that? Because you were there for that, I think, when I asked that I was, question. I was, I was like, I've never thought about, like, that question, but that's, like, that would be my two. Like, I think they said Paramore and Panic at the Disco, and I was like... Among other ones. That's what I would say. Um, actually, in Too Deep, when I, uh, I co-wrote that with, uh, two of my producers that I work with, and, um, that song was actually originally, not the lyrics or melody or anything, like, strictly just the music. Um, when we started to write that song, it was presented to me like it was just a music track. And it was a little different than it sounds now. Um, not too far off, but it was, the music track that I listened to was actually supposed to be on um, Panic at the Disco's most recent record. That's so cool. Um, but they ended up not using it. Brendan Yuri ended up not using it. So I got it. <laughs> <laughs> And that was huge for me because I was like, oh, my God, like, I love Panic at the Disco. Like, this is crazy. That is so neat. It's like, what did you bring here? Hey, dude, I got to use this music that you I didn't know. use on your album. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. Imagine um, how that conversation would go. He'd, it's, and then he'd like the song. Yeah, and then you'd yeah. be friends. That's how it would go. <laughs> that, that's in a perfect world. In a perfect world. Yeah, guys, if you didn't know, um, when I did the Minshara thing, Madison came in halfway through, and she was just chilling with us, listening. <laughs> she was hiding. I, was pick, I had to pick Liam up. <laughs> yeah, and then it's like, oh, crap, this is still going. <laughs> yeah, she hid over there with Liam. <laughs> Are there any music festivals or concerts you want to play in the future? I really want to play Glastonbury. Um, Rock and Rio. Um, really, all of them. Coachella. Um, there's just so many. I, I, you know, it really sucks because this is the last Warp tour, and that's something that I always wanted to be on at yeah. some point. Um, but oh well. <laughs> That's hard for everyone to take, I think. I feel so bad because there's like so many musicians who are like, well, um, like no. who said that? Who said work tour? And like some of them were so close to it. I remember like hearing some of the bands and thinking that they had so that's, much potential, yeah. were so close to it. Like give it another that's two what years. Happens. That's just how it works when it sucks. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure something, I think something else like it might come along, but there's nothing that's ever going to be exactly like it. Oh, definitely not. Yeah. yeah. Who would you want to collaborate on a song with? Hmm. It could be just writing or they could be in the song. As far as writing, writing would be uh, a, an easier answer for me to give to you. Um, I, like I said earlier, I love Jack Antonoff. Um, I don't know if you know who Jack Antonoff is, but he is someone I look up to so much. Um, and he just writes for a lot of people. Um, I really like Julia Michaels, too. Um, she's written for so many different people, and she's an incredible artist on her own as well. So I'd love to collab and co-write songs with them someday. What are your goals? I think my biggest goal is to just be able to support myself someday with just doing music and I just want I want people to be able to relate to the music I write and I just I don't know I, I want to play shows and I want yeah I, I just really want to support myself and like be able to do music and nothing else and just see how far that can take me what advice would you give someone trying to get into music? Never, ever give up, first and foremost. Um, you're going to have times where it sucks and it'd be so much easier to just say, I can't do this anymore, but you can't do that and there's going to be those high moments where everything, you feel like you're on top of the world and 
and it can get ripped out from under you in, in less than a minute. Um, but just have fun with it. And like, no matter who you are, no matter where you're at in life, no matter what you want to do, like, just know that no matter what, like, you have to go for it, like, no matter what, with, with everything you have inside of you, you just have to put yourself into it and, and trust yourself and take that leap and, and just go for it and never stop going for it and stay humble. Always stay humble. Yeah. Never too good for anyone. That's what I always think. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I hate people that are like that. It's like, really? Oh, you and me both. (laughs) It's irritating. What do you do outside of music? <clears throat> I work at Starbucks. <laughs> That's pretty much it. What was your school experience like, like your like socially? Um, I had a really hard time in school. I I always had friends. I had a good close group of friends, but I was kind of always like the runt of the group, like I never really felt like I fit in to anything. And that was always kind of hard. And I just, I hated school. I didn't do very good in school. Um, You know, I just always felt like I just didn't really belong. But I always, I I did have a lot of close, like I had some, some of my best friends are from school, but I really only have like three friends that I would say are like you know close to me and yeah. but other than that like I just didn't I I didn't have the the worst school experience but I didn't have the best one either yeah I know what you mean there would you rather always have to say everything on your mind or never speak again I think I'd definitely rather say everything on my mind because I, I kind of do that sometimes already. <laughs> yeah. Would you rather only be able to listen to songs by artists you hate for the rest of your life or reread all 56 pages of iTunes terms and conditions every day for the rest of your life? I remember this question and I actually <laughs> thought about it. <laughs> um, I would definitely rather read every day because I just, I don't think I could listen to <laughs> songs I don't like. <laughs> That's already, like, horrible and I know. awful now. Like, I don't think... It's like hearing them once or twice already is bad enough. <laughs> yeah, that's enough for me. I'll take the 56 pages. What would you tell anyone that's being bullied or just going through a hard time? Man, um... Just never, never quit what you're doing. Um... It's not easy. It's it's very, a very hard thing, and um, I I understand. And you know, you you gotta just like find. Basically, I want like it gets better. Like I know sometimes it doesn't seem like it's gonna get any better, but like it always does. Like you can hit rock bottom, but it's gonna get better. You can only go up from there. And as for bullies, like don't. I know it's hard. It is so hard because I, I've dealt with it firsthand. Like it's so hard to act like you don't care or you're not listening to them. But like you take that stuff that people say and and you take it to heart. But you have to just be strong and know that you're strong and just say, screw this. Like, and most of the time, those people are jealous. Like, that's something that I've learned. Um, someone's always going to have something to say. and But it gets better. And those people have nothing else to do. So they find the flaws in other people and... As hard as it is, you gotta try your absolute best to just not let it get to you. And, you know, talk to people, be nice to people always, and, you know, that that's something that, like, music has always really helped me 
when I felt like I had nothing else, I had that. And I, I hope that anyone being bullied or something can also, like, have that. Not necessarily with, with music, just anything. Like, find that thing that keeps you going. Any last comments? Um, I don't know. This was fun. I'm glad, yeah. glad you, uh, I had the opportunity to be on your show. I hope <laughs> I wasn't too awkward. No, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, you're good to come on any time. Yeah, I was, I was really hoping that you'd ask me to be on the show. Cause yeah, I was thinking I, either uh, doing this week or next week. I'm like, yeah, Madison, I'm getting there. Don't worry. <laughs> well, I really appreciate it. You're awesome, Teresa. Of course. Aw, thank you, Madison. I'm serious. Uh, to anyone who's gonna listen to this, my girl Teresa right here, <laughs> she's an amazing, you're an amazing person. Like, Aww. I love the fact that, you know, it is so cool to me and that you just support, like, everyone. And, you know, you don't find that very often. You're like this little gem that we're all so glad to have found because it's hard sometimes to get like people to catch on and and I just I'm so appreciative that like you're out to all of the shows and you push my music out there and I just love it it's great I love going to your shows it's so much fun and it's like the world needs more people like you so I love coming out to your show is it's like so one of the few places that I feel like I fit in. Everyone's always so happy to see me, like you, Liam, Aaron, um, Austin when he's there, all them. Yeah. Well, we all appreciate it. I I appreciate it. Oh my goodness. Oh. I don't know if you can hear that. Like, <laughs> yeah, I caught that. I just, I just scared the crap. What is it? <laughs> Siren is some sort? Is that what I'm, I heard? I'm in a parking lot in like Mechanicsburg and. <laughs> fire station like right beside me or <laughs> it's really loud yeah oh. you can hear it a bit <laughs> all right the world is ending oh god <laughs> we caught it that sounds like one of those like you know like those <laughs> in shows when you hear the bomb alert siren yeah no that's like, i like i'm over here a lot and like it always sounds like that and i'm like i've convinced the world is about to end it scares me every time <laughs> All right, so pretty much EP and show the 13th and then Dewey Beach Fest the 14th? Yes, but I, mean, I know a lot of people won't make it out to Dewey, but um, the EP, if you have time to listen to it, like go pre-order it on iTunes or or uh, through my website. Um, it's it's not expensive at all. On iTunes, it's only three ninety nine. Um, I always hate, like, having to pay a lot of money for music, because I think that's, like, I don't, I don't want to have that be a problem for, for anyone, so I, like, made the price really low, and I hope, I hope people just listen to it and, and like it. Yeah, I'm sure they will. All right, thank you for me on. Thank you for having me.